everybody welcome back it's blondie b here now if you're new here don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on instagram tag me in your weight loss photos at, at miss blondie b now i understand that um, today will not be a weight loss video uh it's just been rather difficult with the whole panic buying i'll get into that later more into that now I know I was supposed to be posting my makeup look from yesterday I honestly I was not happy with the editing process like at all like how I edit it I didn't like it and I don't want to post anything I don't like now back to the weight loss thing so I will be doing a weight loss video for Wednesday so weight loss Wednesdays which I'm excited about um I did go to the grocery store today to kind of like stock up on some keto stuff to really get going because I desperately need to lose weight and it was like crazy like the shelves were empty it was it was madness and I felt like I had to start like kind of stocking up like I'm trying to stock up on some stuff and I'm not trying to panic buy everybody's panic buying I'm not buying like a hoard of toilet paper I, the toilet paper thing's absolutely ridiculous to me but anyways it was more or less just because it's like you're kind of scared, like, if, if something does happen, am I going to even be able to get and eat food because, like, everybody else has panic bought all the food and it's, like, really difficult to, like, get anything right now. It, it's crazy. And another thing I noticed, too, is, like, you can't get hand sanitizer whatsoever and, like, I hardly have any and you can't get any, but for some reason, you buy, like, there's tons of hand soap, so I'm not sure why people aren't buying hand soap, like, Y'all should be buying hand soap. It works better. It, well, I don't know. probably works better than, you know, hand sanitizer. You definitely should be buying that, too. Uh, it should go hand in hand, but whatever. That's, I guess, a different thing. But, so, <laughs> um, it's really crazy here in California. So, they've been talking about, like, curfews and, like, all this crazy stuff. And they're shutting down bars. And they're shutting down restaurants. And, Everything seems to be closing. I'm not sure how it is in other states. It's really frightening. And I'm not necessarily afraid, like, as scared of the virus as I am is, like, what's actually going on. This is, like, really insane. But I have been, like, kind of keeping home and quarantining myself. Like, I really don't want to catch it either. Like, I catch everything. I don't want to be sick. I'm not interested in it. And thankfully, my school even closed. So now my class is online. Um, and now, like, I mean, it's, like, unfortunate because I didn't sign up for an online class. And I really was enjoying the professor. But... I just don't have to drive so far because I live far away from the school. I don't know. It's it's kind of scary. But, and I wanted to start going back to the gym too. But right now, with the whole, like, how, like, this virus thing is going on, I'm not sure if I want to go to the gym because, you know, like, the gym is always, like, germ infested. So, I don't know. There's that. I think I'm going to just start doing, like, the treadmill that we have here on the elliptical. Maybe I'll do treadmill Thursdays. Like, watch me get on the treadmill and I'll just jibber jabber the entire time. That might be fun. <laughs> come up with maybe something fun to talk about and I'll walk on the treadmill <laughs> and I'll be super out of breath it's fine so because of all this like coronavirus all those crazy things that are going on right now in, in America in the cold world and it's just completely nuts that I decided to do a video on Typhoid Mary now Typhoid Mary what's interesting is that she was asymptomatic excuse me with salmonella, salmonella typhi. I cannot talk tonight. And so even, so she was asymptomatic, whatever, I can't say it. And she was a healthy carrier, but she also ref absolutely refused to wash her hands. Apparently she didn't believe in that. I don't know. So she was an Irish immigrant that came over and moved to New York in 1883. And when she moved here, she became a cook for wealthy families. And she worked for seven different wealthy families during her time as a cook. Now, it was her ignorance that made her an unintentional killer. So she wasn't malicious anyways, but, I mean, you're literally spreading typhoid <laughs> to people. <laughs> you're kind of a killer, but you're not. You know, it's, it's crazy. And she was believed to have infected up to 51 people, possibly more. They really don't know. And... So in the early in the early 20th century, the typhoid would would kill about one in ten people. It was typically lower class would be get it because it was you know it spread through food and water. So they weren't in the cleanest living condition, so they were more apt to catch typhoid than the wealthy. So that's where things get interesting is when the wealthy people started catching typhoid. Now in 1902. 
Mary began working in the summer home of a lawyer named Coleman Drayton. Drayton, um, Drayton's home ended up tri sorry, excuse me, thyroid <laughs> thyroid typhoid ended up striking his home and killing seven out of the nine people that lived there. So the only two people that were left was Mary and Coleman. And they all died, like I said, of typhoid fever, which is really interesting. So she ended up leaving. She was like, I'm out. I don't know what you're going to do now. So by the summer of 1906, an outbreak had broke out in a wealthy, of a wealthy man, a banker in New York named Charles Henry Warren. Now, he had a summer home in Oyster Bay, Long Island. And by August, six of the 11 people in his home were sick with typhoid fever. Once again, Mary was the cook. Now, because this is like so strange and like his whole family got sick, he decided to hire a man by the name of George Sober. Now, George Sober was a sanitary investigator. So basically, Charles wanted to like figure out, can you rent his home out in the winter? Like, is it contaminated? What's going on? How come my entire family got sick? So George Sober investigated, did a whole investigation of the house, checked different things, and came to find out that he narrowed it down to Mary Mallon, Typhoid Mary. Now, of course, once again, she had left the house shortly after the outbreak. Um, now, George did find her in 1907. She was working as a cook on Park Avenue in New York, and the family's daughter was dying of typhoid fever. And also, think, um, another thing is the woman who did their laundry, I forget what they call it, I think it was a laundriness or something. Well, she was also had typhoid fever. So, once again, Mary left. She always would leave the house. Like, as soon as an outbreak would come out, like, break out, she'd, I'm gone. I'm bouncing. I want nothing to do with this. I'm leaving. So, George had hunted her down, and he insisted that she be tested. And, of course, Mary refused. She absolutely refused to be. She didn't believe that there was anything wrong with her. She thought she was perfectly fine, perfectly healthy. She had no symptoms. And so, she attacked George with a carving fork because... I guess that's what you do. <laughs> Somebody accuses you of having typhoid. You say, hey, I'm going to fight you with a fork. Now, so she she got away. She escaped. She, like, ran away from him. Like, no. And then on March 19th, 1907, uh, the New York Health Department finally took her into custody. So she was finally taken into custody. And she had tested positive for typhoid, but she still claimed her innocence. She still declared, you know, I'm innocent. I'm fine. Nothing's wrong with me. But they ended up quarantining her at the Riverside Hospital on North Brothers Island for three years. Now, they, the hospital had offered to remove her gallbladder. They said, if we remove your gallbladder, everything will be fine. You'll be cured. Everything will be good. But she absolutely refused. She kept proclaiming her innocence. She said, there's nothing wrong with me. She refused all treatment from the hospital. And the hospital tried to use, like, other methods, they couldn't find anything to cure her because she needed her freaking gallbladder removed, and, well, she was refusing. So finally, in February 1910, she was released under the promise to check in with the health department every three months and to never work as a cook again. Well, a cook in those days for women was a very, you made more money. You wouldn't make much more doing different servant work, such as doing laundry or whatnot, and she did try to do laundry for a few years, but she went back to being a cook because, well... You know, it paid more. So she went back, so for the next five years, she had worked under an alias. Now, it wasn't until 1915 when she was working in a hospital called the Sloan Hospital for Women when an outbreak of 25 people had caught typhoid. Two ended up dying. Now, once again, <laughs> she became quarantined. And this time, it was, uh, they quarantined her on March 27th, 1915. And the press ended up giving her the, is the one who gave her the name Typhoid Mary because it became perfectly clear she was the one giving everybody typhoid. And so after this, she did remain there for the rest of her life. And on Christmas of 1932, she, be, she had a stroke and she became bedridden for the next six years and had died November 11th, 1938. And after she had passed away, they ended up doing an autopsy. Come to find out, she did actually have live typhoid bacteria in her gallbladder. So she would have had that removed 
she would have been fine. She wouldn't have passed the disease around. Now, I want to do the story after I found out about her and I read about it. It's because this goes to show that, for one, we all should be washing our hands right now. We need to be staying clean. And also, I see a lot of people, like, against, like, the whole quarantining thing and all that. But the problem is, is when you're not quarantining and you're, you're going to end up spreading the disease and you will make people sick. So, instead of just staying home, I, well, even though you believe that you can handle, like, whatever the coronavirus is or whatever, and you think that in your head, like, oh, you know, I'm fine, you're going to affect the people who have compromised immune systems and the elderly and all that. And even though a lot of people seem to think, like, every man for himself, I do believe that we should be watching out for the people who can't handle the diseases, for the people who had, you know, organ transplants, for the people who have diabetes, for the people who have cancer, we should be all responsible as a society and take care of one another. And it's very important to stay inside, you know, don't be in quarantine yourself, and especially if you are sick or you feel like anything's wrong, get tested, make sure you don't have it, stay home, don't give it to anybody else. That is, like, you know, incredibly important. I think we can learn a lot from Typhoid Mary and how she ignored the fact that there was something wrong. She refused to see that, you know, even though she believed she was innocent, she was still unintentionally killing people. She was still unintentionally making people sick. They believe that, you know, that 51 that they do know of, they think that it was actually a higher number. And there's been other people through history, too, who, you know, didn't believe that they were sick and they passed their disease or their virus, whatever, along to other people. And it's very important that we make sure that everybody stays safe, stay healthy, you know, and it's just, it's such a scary time right now. And I understand, like, it's incredibly frightening for everybody to be quarantined and locked in and down and everything shutting down. And I'm scared too. Like, that part scares me. But at the same time, I certainly don't want to be the reason that somebody else gets sick and, sick and dies or something bad happens. I don't want that on my chest. So I think this this whole thing's like I feel like we can learn a lot from Ty Foot Mary. Anyways, if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. There's definitely more coming. Um I know this video is coming out super late tonight and that I had homework and I did other things today too. So I probably should have done it earlier. I'm actually exhausted right now. But whatever the case, um if you like I said, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this and follow me on Instagram. Like I said, I'll leave the link below. I'll have something out tomorrow. Definitely doing weight loss Wednesdays. And there'll be other fun things. And have a good night. And I'll see you later. Bye-bye.